Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here, and today we're continuing on with the OpenAI stuff. Today, we're going to show you how you can unleash the full potential of your coding skills with OpenAI. This is it's really a cool video here of demonstrating how we can get the computer to, to do a lot of stuff for us. So, Right, and, and most of the times what we have been talking about is that we grab some code and see what it comes up with, if it helps me troubleshooting and stuff. But how about one of the most difficult parts of programming is not making the code, it's actually coming up with the solution to a problem. So I have a problem and I try to come up with the solution. And sometimes I know what steps I want to take. And probably what I want to do is just tell the, uh, the AI to, hey, give me a step-by-step a step instruction uh, or create something that would give me the step-by-step -step instructions, and then I will use that to create my own code. Say, for example, that I say, hey, uh, I just go to the AI and say, hey, give me uh, an algorithm or uh, in, uh, that would get a folder, right? and find the biggest file so biggest uh biggest file and return its name in that folder uh, an algorithm or i could say step by step instructions but let me see what it comes up with Okay, it says, okay, so let's create a variable first, set it to blank, then use that module to do this one thing, then go through the files, get the size, then get check if the size is bigger or smaller, and then return the value. And then it also gives you an example code of that, which is amazing because, again, I didn't have to think about what steps I have to take to solve the problem. I just described what my end goal is, right? So this is amazing because it tells me what module to import. It tells me more or less what to do for listing that particular folder that has been passed to the function, get the file, the size of each of them, and then determining which is the big one, the biggest one. And in the end, it would just return the biggest size. So that is amazingly good. I like the idea of using AI not to define code, but actually give you the instructions that you can then, in your own language, any language, just go ahead and do that. Because if you know how to create a variable in your language, just do that. Then use an OS module. Okay, I don't know if I have an OS module in uh, AutoHotKey, for example, but we do have ways of listing the directories in a folder. So I would use that instead. Again, well, it's not code, but it's something that I could translate into code easily. Yeah, so why don't we though go copy the code? The code this that code offers. here. Yeah. And, and then, or maybe you don't even have to copy it. So just say, can you translate the above? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I don't have to copy it. Uh, uh, show that example uh, in uh, in our hard key. Don't worry right. about it. Our hard key. Yeah, it is really smart. It would know what I tried, what I meant. So uh, show that example in our hard key and comment each step. Let's see what it does. It goes with the comments. That is interesting. It is using a an ex a function. Yeah. yeah, this function does not exist. Right. But at least it knows that you would have to do that. Well, and I would tell it to make one for me. <laughs> I, that's what I was going to say. Was it, it might you know? Yeah, I was going to say it might actually have done it. You know, but it didn't. So then you just right. say, "Can you please write that?" Function. Right. But notice that now he's also giving you a breakdown of what the code is doing, even though it actually set the right. uh, folders there. Now, again, there's a few things that we might change about that. Like, that would be converting it into a function because this is not a function. It's trying to return something. If you try to run this code in Auto Hotkey, it's going to give you an error because you're not inside a function and you cannot return a value if you're not inside a function. But I would just 
say, hey, convert that into a function or something like that. Convert that code, that code into a function, no matter what you say. Yeah, there you go. That's better. <laughs> so now I have that same code, uh, but now it is in uh, inside a function so that when it gives the uh, the largest or largest size or whatever, it will be able to return the value. That's it. And this is a test. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. That looks really good. Find biggest file and so on. And it's telling you what it's doing. So this is a very amazing thing because I, I just talked about my end goal. I just want to get the, the uh, biggest file in a function. And it just gave me at least a, starting point again most of the things that i would use this for is a starting point and then from there i would go ahead and finish up the code a little bit with my experience i would notice which parts of the code i would need to really uh fix and sometimes look at this here sometimes the for loop is incorrect this time it did it correctly yeah. <laughs> so awesome so I'm gonna I'm gonna send something telegram. Copy and paste it into there for me, please. Uh, you mean this this code? Oh, okay. No, sorry. Uh, okay. So let's. <laughs> I upload the papers. The one can I find them? Just did. For I think it's gonna say no. I think so. I too. bet. I bet so, that it's gonna say I, no. <laughs> yes, yes. Fire up immediately. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, which I think both of us, yeah, our job, <laughs> which is actually your point earlier too, right? Is you right. get it back. It's not done. It's not polished. It's also not necessarily sophisticated, right? If you're coming up with right. a complicated GUI, like, yeah, that's a ways off. But it, it definitely is going to help us, you know, speed up in our development for uh, our It's fighting for me. Hey, in summary, other language, uh, GB3 and other language can be useful for assisting with coding tasks, but it is not practical to rely solely on them I, for developing software. It's I, generally more effective to have a team of human developers working on your project. That's interesting. I saw a really interesting video this morning, and they were talking about What's it called in GitHub's pilot, Copilot? Yeah, right? GitHub and, Copilot. And I thought it was a really great assessment of it. He said, Copilot helps complements you in writing your code, whereas the GPT-3 is actually really doing stuff for you. You still have to you know, improve it, but it's not just assisting you type, right? Exactly. And I'm like, it's a really, really good distinction of a point of the difference between the two. Right, exactly. Awesome. So... Uh, please, again, like the video. It really helps us out. We get a lot more views. If you learn something, it's awesome. And subscribe if you're not a subscriber. We do you know, regular videos right now. We're cranking these out because it's this is just an amazing topic to me. Um, yeah. Comment below if you want us to touch on a certain topic around this. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.